most frightening part to me was when he had to use the suction, uh, Dr. Rosenbaum. Oh, just because he had to go so deep in me into the, uh, what do we call it? The nerve ending. It hurt. And when he got that far, all I could think of was, oh, what's going to happen? I just, my mind just went. And uh, it was just different. You, I really can't explain it because I felt um, nervous, so nervous that before the surgery, all I did was cry. I didn't know why at the time. And then during surgery, when I finally got in there and they took off the uh, skull and got everything ready, I was all ready until, I was okay until the doctor said, okay, now I'm going to go in. We've got everything ready to cut this little piece of brain out. And it was almost like I was just stiff. I just was hoping to take the right piece out. <laughs> he asked me one time while uh, they were doing the operation uh, if I felt any sensation in my tongue. And I really had to think hard, and I said, why don't you touch that certain place again? I just, all I could think of was, gosh, I hope he takes out the right piece. <laughs> That's the only thing that went through my mind. And, um, but other than that, it wasn't that bad except for the noise when they used the hand drill and the electric drill on me. And as, after that, I was okay. No pain? No pain from the cutting? The no pain from the cutting, no. And, uh, frankly, I just forget, I forgot some of the bad part. All I know is that I'd go through it again because it's changed my life so much. Before, I couldn't read very much, maybe half a page at a time. Well, now I can read 10, 20 pages. And I used to have ringing in my ears so loud sometimes, I'd just go in the bedroom, put a pillow over my head because it was so annoying. And that's gone. The doctors don't know why. Maybe it was the, uh, just nerves. And I don't fly off the handle so much anymore. In fact, uh, my husband and I haven't had a fight in six months, which is very unusual. <laughs> But uh, it's just all around better. I'm not so much a loner anymore. I can talk to people. I uh, used to feel that I'd rather be around animals than people. Frankly, sometimes when I talk to people, and even though I've had the operation, they still don't want to be around me. I still feel that way once in a while, but you have to ignore those people because they're not worth it at all. After surgery, we went down to the recovery room, and I kept on thinking, I, I'd be okay if Gary was just there. And I'd ask for him to come in, and mm -hmm. the nurse would bring him in, and it'd be a time after 20 minutes or so, and she'd wake me up again and say, your husband is here. I kept on thinking, I know he's here. <laughs> <laughs> and then after being down there, they took me up to another room and intensive day in ICU and I was there for two days and at that time I'd ask for a hot water bottle because I had bad pain from my back of my neck and my back. But once they got the hot water bottle on, the pains disappeared just within minutes. And also my husband would massage the back of my neck where it hurt and that would help. I had a headache, but it wasn't unbearable it, in a way. I had my eyes swelled up, but that went down in a couple of days. And things got back to normal pretty quick. <laughs> I'm back to work, and things are doing pretty good. Yes, I had epilepsy since 1962, but until 1980, nobody knew I was an epileptic. 
because I had a complex partial, although they did a right temporal lobotomy, but they thought I was always psychological matter. But when I found out it was an epilepsy, it relieved my living. Well, now I've got some name. Well, you know, I'm glad now I don't have to go psychologist to psychiatrist, but neurologist that knew my living, knew it cha has changed. So even after surgery, they wanted to me to go to psychologist, psychiatrist. I said, no, I'm going to stay with the new, not more psi. And seven months after surgery, I went back to school where I've been wanting for so long time. For I wanted to be a nurse because since I've been mistreated by so many doctors and nurses, I wanted to help those people who are in pain. But this surgery made me more strong. Why don't you? Now you know the real pain you can really help. So I jumped back to school seven months after my surgery. But so many people who knew I had surgery, they had doubts. They had to ask me, you think you can do it? Are you sure? But that just made me more angry inside. If you could have come through that kind of a surgery, without any trouble, and you have to bear such kind of pain. Nothing more you cannot do. You can do anything from now on. It gave me confidence in myself. It just changed the whole life of me. And I just took hardest subjects, chemistry, biology, math, and English. Well, that even doctors, teachers wondered, me as a foreigner taking those things. But, well, I have to if I want to be a nurse. I took it, and surprisingly, there was no memory problem, or there was a fear or some doubt from other people. There may be mm, some memory problem or something. I just fought back with it. You have cut it off. You have become new. Your brain is new now with that scar you have. You are new. Don't think of the old things. You are starting from the beginning. And no bother. Every time, any fear, any doubt from other people, I always say, epilepsy is gone. Don't talk it anymore. So, what confidence and new mind in me is from the scar and the pain we have to go through but I really appreciate all the doctors and nurses who have been so generous to bring all this possible for us. Thank you. I think um, our daughter Leslie has had epilepsy since she was uh, six years old, and she had the epilepsy surgery when she was 21. So uh, we grew up uh, hoping we were being treating Leslie independently, and yet, uh, in a way, we were very protective of her. and. Uh, it was very hard for us as parents to, um, when Leslie came to us and said uh, it was really her idea that she wanted to try for the surgery. And I think probably, uh, I work at a hospital and had somewhat of a knowledge of neurological problems and surgery. <laughs> and uh, so it was, uh, quite frankly, we were quite scared about it. And we had uh, talked to many people. And I think one of the most calming things of all was to come to Good Sam and meet the team, the doctors and psychologists involved. I can't speak uh, highly enough about their ability to com communicate with us as parents, ask every question that was probably very dumb in some cases, and uh, they gave us the confidence that they weren't dumb questions. And uh, one thing that we were very concerned about was that Leslie would be awake during the surgery. Somehow the fact that she would be sleeping peacefully while they removed this tissue was much more comforting to us than to think of her being awake. It was very hard for us during the waiting period to think of her being awake, and that was probably the hardest part, quite frankly. We had confidence in the surgeon and confidence in the planning, and we thought the details previous to her surgery were carried out with uh, the utmost accuracy. Um, what the results were, it's been eight months. Um, Leslie's life has changed dramatically, and we feel a great joy for her because of this change. Um, before her surgery, she took care of children in a preschool at the YMCA, and uh, but this year, an added bonus was that she could not only not only did she stay with the kids during the day, but she was able to go to a camp, be a counselor, she was able to go swimming.